So let's look now at how we can solve some problems that involve linear relations. So we've got a problem here. The cost to rent a surfboard is given by this equation, C equals 20 times H, or C equals 20H, where C is the cost in dollars, and H is the number of hours that the surfboard is rented. So we have to create a table of values, draw the graph, and then we're going to answer some questions here later on from our table of values or our graph. So, um, let's go back here to the equation. So cost is equal to 20 times h. So my two variables are going to be h and c. So h is like my x value, and c is like my y value. So we'll need to generate our own values for h. So let's assume we rent it for zero hours, or one hour, or two hours, or three hours, or let's go up to, well, let's, let's even go up to five. So uh, if we rent for zero hours, zero, so this is 20, cost is equal to 20 times h. So if h is zero, 20 times zero is zero. So cost would be zero. If h were one, 20 times 1 is 20, so cost would equal 20. If h were 2, cost would equal 20 times 2, and 20 times 2 is 40. If h is 3, 20 times 3 would be 60. If h is 4, 20 times 4 is 80. And if h is 5, 20 times 5 would be 100. So it looks like we're definitely dealing with a linear relation here, because h goes up by 1 each time, and c is going up by 20 each time. So the values of h are just ones that I've arbitrarily picked. Ours are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the cost I got by putting those values of h in here and working out whatever 20 times these values of h were. So I've got my table of values. Now I'm going to draw a graph. So let's get our graph in here. There we go. Um, H is 0 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So don't forget to label your axes down here. So this is ours. And on this axis, I've got cost, which also starts at 0 and goes up by 20. So I'm going to just go up by 20s here. And I can put a title on here. So this is um, cost to rent a surfboard. And now I can plot my points. So I've got a point here at 0, 0. I've got a point here at 120. I've got a point here at 240, 360, 480, and 5, 100. And the points do lie in a straight line. So we've got our table of values. We've got our graph. Whoops, I forgot to label this axis. So this is cost. And my units are dollars. Um, good. Now, what's the relationship between H and C? Um, I like to get that from my table of values. So it looks like every time H goes up by 1, cost goes up by 20. So in other words, it's $20 per hour to rent this surfboard. And every hour you rent, the cost goes up by 20. So I'm going to write, as the number of hours increases by 1, the cost increases by 20. Now, let's look at the next question here. What would be the cost if you rented the board for 8 hours? Well, we've got a few ways we could figure this out. We already have the equation cost is equal to 20 times h. So if you're telling me how much would it cost if you rent the board for 8 hours, the cost would equal 20 times 8, because h is now 8, and 20 times 8 is $160. So the cost would be $160 if you wanted to rent that board for 8 hours. How else could we figure this out? Well, we could go to our table here and we could continue this pattern on. 
So 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 would, and these are going up by 20, so this would be 120, 140, 160. Okay, same, same thing. Or we could go on our graph and continue the points on our graph. And 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, this would become 120, 140, 160. So now if we're renting for 8 hours, the point says this should be $160. So the cost if we ran the board for 8 hours, 160 bucks. Now the last question, is it reasonable to have points between the ones on the graph? So here's our points on the graph. Now, if we rented the board for one and a half hours, would that mean that we are only charged $30? Because that's where this point would fit in here. And I suppose that would depend on what the rental policy is for the surfboard company. However, usually, if you rent the board for one and a half hours, you're still going to be charged the two-hour rate. So I would say it's not likely that you're going to be able to have a point between one and two hours. Um, if you rent for more than an hour, you'll probably be charged for renting the board for the full two hours. But again, that would depend on the, on the policy of the, of the surfboard company. Let's look at another example. Okay, suppose you work one day selling shirts at the local fair. Let's say you are paid $20 plus $2 for every shirt that you sell. So we need to make a table of values. So what are our two what are our two things, two variables that we're working with? The number of shirts we don't know, so let's call that n. That's one of our variables, the number of shirts we sell. And then how much money we make, let's go with M for money. So if you sold zero shirts, let's start with zero shirts. If we sold zero shirts, we're still going to make the $20 because it says you're paid $20 for the day plus $2 for every shirt that we sell. So if we sold zero shirts, we're still going to make $20. If we sold one shirt, now we're going to make $2 for that shirt, plus the 20, so now we're at $22. We'd make $22 for the day. And if we sold two shirts, we're going to get $2 for every shirt that we sell. So if we sold two shirts, that's going to be 2 times 2, which is $4 for the shirts, plus the $20, plus 24 And if we sold three shirts, we're going to get two dollars for every shirt, so two times three, that makes us six dollars, plus the twenty, twenty-six. So I've got a few, few, few table of values now. Um, now, is the relationship linear? Well, let's see, I decided here I was going to go up by one every time. Okay, so that's good, everything goes up by one. On this side, here we go up by 2, here we go up by 2, and here we go up by 2. So the answer to this question is yes. And the reason why that is, if we were asked to give our reason, explain why, yes, because n increases by 1 each time, and m increases by 2 each time. Now let's graph it. Right. So down on this axis, I need the number of shirts that I'm going to sell. And on this axis, how much money I'm going to make. I'm going to start here at 20, and then I'm going to go up by 2 every time because that seems to be my pattern here. So this is not zero down here, or if it is zero, we gotta do one of these little squiggly things here because we can't go from zero to 20 and then all of a sudden just start going up by twos. So we'll start here at 20 and go up by two 
every time. So this axis is the amount of money made, dollars made. And on this axis is number of shirts sold. And this says we need a title up here, so money made selling shirts. Money made selling shirts. All right. Here. So if I sell zero shirts, I'm going to make $20. So there's my first point. If I sell one shirt, I'm going to make $22. If I sell two shirts, $24. Three shirts, $26. So there's the points that we've got so far. So there, we've got a graph of our relationship. Now, the question is, here, if we sold eight shirts, how much money would we make? Well, let's, let's see a couple of ways that we could do this. We could continue our points on. So four would be 28, five, six, seven, eight. And this would go, this going up by two, so 34, 36. So it looks like $36 is what we would make. So one way would be to use the graph to get 36. Another way would be to continue the table, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then going up by 2 every time on here, so 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. So $36. And yet a final way would be to use the information in, our, in uh, our question like an equation. If we sold eight shirts, so that's eight times two. So the amount of money we'd make, or M for money, would equal two times the number of shirts that we make plus the $20. So now if I put eight in here, two times eight would give me $16 for the shirts. And 16 plus 20 is 36 dollars. So three different ways of doing that. Create an equation and put 8 in for n to find out how much money. Use our table of values or use our graph. So 36 dollars if we sold 8 shirts. Now this last one's a bit tricky. How many shirts would you have to sell to make 50 dollars? Say we wanted to make 50 dollars. Well, we could do a few things here. We could continue this pattern on. So 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. So 38 would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It looks like there would be 15 shirts that we would have to sell to make $50. So use our table of values and find out where we have 50 for money. That would be 14 shirts. Or am I going to have enough room here? Let's see. Oops, we're not going to have enough room. Whoops. Now I did it. Maybe I can slide this up a bit. So you could make your graph a bit bigger. And then you could continue these points on. Oops, I'm going to have to slide this over here. Okay, so I've kept my points going here. And so I want to know where this point is, because here's where there is $50. And now I can scroll down here and find out what would this point be. There's the question. Well, this is 8. So here's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you might be able to use your graph. This one was sort of stretching my graph to the limit there. Um, and so sometimes it's hard, to, especially if the numbers are big, to make your graph work. But we, we were able to stretch the graph out and see that $50 corresponds to 15 shirts. Or we could even use our equation. 
And this is a little bit tricky, but we know that the money has got to be 50. 50 dollars. So M is 50. And now we have to find out how many shirts we would need to sell. So, we could take 20 away from both sides. And get 2 times N now is 30. So we know we got paid $20 for the day. So if we're selling, selling how many shirts to make $50, it's really $30 worth of shirts that we're selling. And if each, each shirt is worth $2, oops, so we divide everything by 2 to get N equals 15. So this is a little bit advanced. If you haven't done algebra yet, um, maybe you didn't do that. In, um, in a previous course. We're certainly going to learn that a little bit later. Um, you could always figure that out by using your table of values or by using your graph. Now in this particular example that we were doing here, the money made selling shirts, would it be possible to have a point in between one and two, say one and a half? Could we sell one and a half t-shirts and make, I guess, $23? Definitely not can't sell half a t-shirt or a third of a t-shirt. You couldn't say, how much money would I make if I sold 3.2 shirts? Not going to make any sense. So for sure in this one, our number of shirts are either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Definitely no data points in between those ones. So there's a couple of word problems um, that we've solved that involve linear relations.